El Toro. Kit Carson. Now, what are you doing in Ventura? Obeying the wishes of my good father. He says it's time for me to settle down. You settle down? I'll never believe it. Well, it's the truth, amigo. He buys for me an interest in this establishment. Soon I'll be the biggest innkeeper in all California. You know, you look bigger already now that you're setting up your own table. <laughs> Well, it's not like the good old days when I was often hungry, but always free. How's business? Well, it comes and it goes. Right now, we have many customers because of the big land trial at the courthouse tomorrow. But always I have room for you. Thanks. Well, unless I'm mistaken, that's Kit Carson. That young man? Oh, don't underestimate him. He's important enough to personally represent the governor of California. Everything's worked out fine. The guests think that I'm actually the owner of this hotel. Are you sure no one suspects that we're working together? Oh, si, amigo. They believe that El Toro is the keeper of this inn. And very fortunate he is indeed to have all the contenders of the lawsuit under his roof. That's exactly the way the governor wanted it arranged, so that we could maintain peace while the trial's going on. Well, you make yourself at home here. You're doubling up with me. Anything you want, all you have to do is ask for it. Thanks. Here's how we pay our hotel bill. Pardon, senor landlord. I would like to present myself. I am Andreas Mercante. Oh, a pleasure. Yeah, my name is El Toro, senorita. And I am Carlota Mercante. Para servir a usted. And my brothers, Marco y Sebastian. Tell me, senor, are you the same El Toro who is said to be the best knife thrower in all California? Well, being a truthful person, I must confess that I am. My brother and I are not without a certain skill at the game. See, si, that's verdad. And we will make it worth your while to display your talent. We will toss you for one dollar a throw. Oh, the senorita get to watch this sport? Delighted, senor. Oh. Well, pardon me, sir, but uh, my host doesn't seem to keep its records very clear. Could you direct me to Judd Rockcliffe, the attorney? Well, that's my name and my business. My name's Carson. Kit Carson. Well, I've heard so much about you, it's a surprise to actually meet you. I'd like to have a talk with you. If I can spare the time, surely. Let's see, two to two. I think I can spare a few minutes. Only two to two. Two to two, that's funny the way that comes out. Sounds like a fellow tooting a whistle. Two to two. <laughs> I needn't tell you uh, the importance of your case tomorrow. If you win, which I generally do, you'll gain for your client the right to dispossess the Macantos family, to expel them from their lands and take over. Uh, Captain Drake is known throughout the state as an honest and straightforward gentleman. Yet Captain Drake might be mistaken in the merits of his wife's case. Isn't it Mrs. Drake that's bringing this case up against the Mercanti family? In a way, yes. You see, she found the original land grant in the old Casanega papers. And under the law, her husband has to act for her. What's hers is his. I'd like to see that document. Oh, just a second, Carson. Uh, here's my authority. Go ahead, open it. Uh, I don't have to. I know Governor Colton's handwriting when I see it. Well, as long as you've got your orders, here it is. The royal seal of Philip VI, Emperador de España. That seal proves it's genuine. Yes, it looks genuine. You mean to tell me you carry this important document around on your person? I never leave it out of my sight. I haven't since the case began. That's far too valuable to trust to any safe. That parchment's worth 50 square miles of very valuable property. Yes, and also El Toro's hotel. <laughs> Those mechanics. They have to face me in court tomorrow and look the way they prepare their case. Maybe they think you don't have one. Well, I've got a report to make out. Thank you, and I'll see you later. Sure. That's $16 that each one of you owes me, senores. Would you care to double the bet again? Seguro. And out of the circle, a penalty of $5 more. Bueno? It's a pleasure to take your money, senor. As the winner, you are entitled to the first throw. Oh, no, go ahead. I give you the EC wide open target. Gracias. Caramba! 
I have thrown away $37. To fill my empty pocket. Usted, señor. Not a bad throw for a beginner. Now, senorita, you will see the work of an expert. El Toro wins again. That's $37 from you, Sebastiana, and $32 from you, Andres. Now, Marco, it is your turn. Too bad you don't have a chance to beat me. I feel very lucky. I will throw for all we owe you, plus a side bet of double that amount. As you wish, senor. And gracias for teaching me how to become rich in this hotel business. <laughs> Tie. Oh, no, amigo. A win. How can there be a tie when your knife is not even in the board? As one sportsman to the other, I would advise you not to argue the matter. Ay, de mi. Something tells me that I've been hurt. But there will be no argument, senores, if you take out your winnings in board and room. Come in. Senor Carson, may I talk to you, please? Yes. Won't you come in? Gracias. How do you know my name? Well, you were pointed out to me in the lobby. Oh, what can I do for you? You can protect my husband, Captain Drake, against his enemies in this terrible lawsuit. The Mercanti brothers have threatened his life. How do you know this? It is written in Spanish. So it is. Captain Drake, he will drop this lawsuit and leave Ventura at once or you will never leave alive. How do you know this came from the Mercanti brothers? Who else would want to see the lawsuit dropped? Maybe they're taking this case more seriously than I thought. Has the captain seen this? Well, he hasn't seen it yet. I only received it in the hotel mailbox a few moments ago. Oh, my poor husband. He has had so much to worry about, and now this. Let's go over and see what the captain has to say about this. Drake has been murdered. Get the sheriff. But I can't. He's out chasing El Condor, the bandit. What's the matter, gentlemen? Something wrong? Yes. As their attorney, you better go in there. With the sheriff out of town, who has the authority to take over? Who represents the law? Would it not be the man who represents the governor? Yes, I guess it is my job. How can I help you, amigo? Get a doctor to certify the cause of death. Stay here, Rockcliffe. And don't let anybody touch anything until the doctor has made out his report. Yeah. Come on, Mrs. Drake. Get a hold of yourself, ma'am. It was only several years ago we met in San Pedro, where he anchored his ship. I first saw him on the Embarcadero. He was a true sea captain, a king among men. I know of your husband's reputation. Honest as the day is long. Come in. I just found this. Thought you ought to have it. It was thrown through the open window, got the captain through the heart. Takes a real expert to throw with that precision. Thanks. But you could have spared Mrs. Drake the details. You needn't spare me anything that has to do with the murder of my husband. Whatever evidence you have, I want to know it. I want to help. What are you going to do next, Carson? Paying customers, I have nine, and non-paying customers, I have nine. How can I break even? You might stop being taken in by experts. You're falling for every faker that comes to town. But how can I resist them? They're such charming, such wonderful people. Now you take, for instance, that lovely senorita Carlota Mercante. You take her. I got my hands full with Mrs. Drake. Oh, so now the shoe's on the other foot. This time it is you who has the widow. El Toro, did you ever see this knife before? See, it's my best throwing knife. Are you sure? See, mire, here's a nick on the handle where Marco Mercante's blade knocks mine out of the target. How would you like to be suspected of the murder of Captain Drake? I, El Toro, accused of murder? Kit, I lost the knife. Suddenly I miss it and I cannot find it. 
The doctor found it in Captain Drake. It was placed there by someone who didn't know you were my friend. That we were working on this case together. Oh, so they want you to waste your time tracking me down, huh? That's the whole idea. Well, if I'm to be the pigeon in this goose chase, I might as well fly like one. Are you sure you don't mind being my suspect? And I think I'll enjoy the game. It'll be dangerous. Now, who would have sympathy for Captain Drake? He filed that lawsuit to seize the property from many people. I don't know. Kenneth? Come in. Carlotta, I need your help. ¿Qué pasa? Where are your brothers? Andrés, Marco, Sebastián. Amigos, I come to you in great trouble. You made a bet and you lost it, not pay. You do not understand. Money troubles I always have, but this is murder. Murder? Who was murdered? Captain Drake, your opponent in the lawsuit. So, we will not have the pleasure of defeating him in court. That is too bad. Too bad for me, he was killed with my knife. Your knife? See, it was thrown through an open window with the greatest of accuracy. By the greatest knife thrower in all California? A title which I lost to you, senor. What is being done about the murder? The senora Drake has hired Kit Carson to hunt down the killer. I have been told Kit Carson is not for hire. You forget, the senora is a very attractive woman. It is the business of Kit Carson to bring the guilty man to justice. I beg of you, go to him and tell him how I came to lose my knife. And prove to him that we had the motive to kill, the opportunity and the stolen weapon? But is it true, senores? Believe me, I did not realize that until now. Any one of you could be the guilty man, except the senorita Carlota. I do not know which of my brothers did it, but I will give him a time for escape. Andres. I will go north. You go to Mexico. A brave man, our Andres. Or a guilty one. You have insulted our brother. A thousand pardons. I apologize, senores. What's your hurry, McCarthy? Stay where you are. Do not follow me. Covered, men. Don't do any shooting. I said you're covered.
Sorry, senores, but I had to do it this way. Untie him and get on your horses. You haven't a thing to worry about, my dear. When we go to trial tomorrow, the judge and the jury are going to be very sympathetic with a distressed young widow. A young woman whose life has suddenly been blighted. Who is there? Kate Carson, ma'am. Won't you come in, Mr. Carson? I'm sorry, ma'am. Mr. Rockcliffe, I've got myself three suspects. I need some help on the legal angle. Could you spare me a moment? Always happy to aid the law. Senores, you know Counselor Rockcliffe? Our opponent's lawyer. We only know him by his bad reputation. Young man. Enough of that. He's been kind enough to offer his advice on your legal rights. I'm going to give each one of them a test to either convict them of the murder of your client or to clear them of suspicion. Do they have to take it? Legally, you have no compulsion on them. But it's always been my opinion that a man who won't take a chance to clear himself hasn't a chance in court. You've heard your rights. Now step up. Oh, senorita, would you mind untying the hands of your brothers? Well, don't you think you're taking a terrible chance with these incriminated men? I'll be the judge of that. All right, now line up here at the desk. First, have any of you seen this paper before? No. Now we'll see if you're telling the truth. Take pen and ink, each of you. I want you to write in the Spanish language in capital letters these words. I want you to drop this lawsuit at once. Well, how can we? What's stopping you? I want you to drop this lawsuit at once. But it is not in the construction of the Spanish language. I know it. Do the best you can. And you, Mr. Counselor, I want you to take the same test just for comparison. I don't think that's necessary. What's the matter? Well, you mean to say that you're considering me as a suspect? Remember what you said about a man and his chances? Or do I have to repeat your advice of counsel? Well, as long as you put it that way, why... Senorita, would you mind stepping up, please? Take a look at these. Where would you say Mr. Rockcliffe learned the Spanish language? In Spain. He writes in print like a Spaniard. And your brothers print like Californians. Mr. Ratcliffe, you printed this warning letter to Captain Drake yourself. That's ridiculous. The, the print's entirely different. How would you know unless you made it different? And not only that, you printed that note after Captain Drake was murdered. How are you so sure of the exact time of death? Because you pulled out your watch and made a point of telling me, not once, but twice, that it was two to two. I looked out the window, and I'm no plainsman if I couldn't tell it was 2.30. You were setting up an alibi. Oh, that's circumstantial evidence. Now, have you anything else, Mr. Plainsman? Yes. That Spanish land grant you have. I want to see it again. Well, all right. Drop the gun. Stand up there, everybody. Now we can be friends again. The guilty man has been caught. How can we ever thank you, Kate Carson? I still can't prove it. Watch him for me. Quien es? It's Kate Carson, ma'am. Come in, amigo mio. What is your news? You have obtained a confession? Uh, not yet. I ran into a bit of trouble and I need your help. 
Of course. Anything that I can do. I'd like you to clear up a couple of points. And first. Why did you ask me to protect your husband after your husband had been already dead? I, I did not know that. You should have. Your lawyer knew. As a matter of fact, he wrote that warning note you showed me. Perhaps I have been taking advice from the wrong man. Yes. And another thing, he said that this important document has not left his hands since the case began. That is true. Mr. Rockcliffe has had all the papers on the case. Uh-uh. The one that had this one was stabbed by a sharp instrument. Your lawyer, who claims that this important document has not left his person, is Hale and Hardy. But your husband, who normally would carry an important paper like this, is dead. Does that suggest anything to you? Why, I, I hardly know what to think. I do. I think that this document is a forgery, cooked up by you and your lawyer in Spain. Your husband, a very honorable man, caught on at the last moment that, that your case was not legitimate. What of it? My case will still be won, as long as the California courts are obliged to accept the royal crest of Spain on any document. Look at it closely, my friend. Yes, King of Spain. That is what matters in court. And my stupid husband could not see it that way. But you are very clever. Clever enough to share any 50 square miles of that rich Ventura Valley land and more. What more? You mean you have more land grants that you intend suing on? You know what I mean. Judd Rockcliffe is only a brain. But you, you are a man. Thank you very much. And you are the most beautiful and the most selfish and contemptible murderess that will ever be hung by the state of California. On what evidence? You have no witness to my very dull conversation with a stupid young man. Oh, I don't need a witness. The lower courts might honor this forgery, but uh, when I report to the governor, he won't. But you are not going to report anything. The blades of Toledo that were famous long ago, and sometimes used for more than sewing by the women of old Spain. But my husband was, was killed with a knife as the doctor will testify. No, he was killed by these shears. Your lawyer switched them with El Toro's knife. That stupid fool. That stupid fool is my partner. A man who would give his life for me. You were stupid, Bella, when you allowed your attorney to try to pin the murder on El Toro. A man who was sent down here with me by the governor. Let's go. Senor del Toro, now that we have won our lawsuit, we are checking out of your hotel. I regret the little game I play with you, but I am happy to settle our account with cash. Uh, gracias. Adios, muchachos. Adios, Carlota. Con recuerdos. Here I have seen and met the most wonderful man in the world. Oh, a magnificent compliment, querida. No less than Kit Carson deserves. Let's ride, Toro. Adios, amigos. Adios. <laughs>